EPC protocols, and signaling analysis. In this series of lectures, we are discussing the detailed service flows for mobility management, session management, security management, and subscriber data management. Mobility management. Starting from mobility management, all signaling flows cases are being discussed in detail. In our first lecture, we studied the IMSI, International Mobile Subscriber Identity Based Attach Scenario, and in today's lecture, we will study and analyze the GUDI, Globally Unique Temporary Identity Based Attach Scenario. So let's start. Overall Service Flow Model if a UI does not initiate an attach procedure for the first time, the UI includes its GUDI, globally unique temporary identity, in an attach request message. The GUDI attach consists of the following phases. S1 signaling connection establishment and initial attach message sending. The UI establishes a connection with the eNodeB over the S1 interface. By the way, if you are interested in understanding the network interfaces like S1, then please refer to relevant lectures for which link has been placed in the description of video. Authentication. The MME transfers the IMSI, obtains the authentication quadruple from the HSS, and helps the UA and network authenticate with each other. After authentication succeeds, the MME obtains UA subscription data from the HSS. Location Update The MME sends an update location request message to register with the HSS. Default Bearer Establishment A default bearer is established on the EPC network, based on the default APN and PDN subscription context in the UA subscription data. After the default bearer is established, the UE successfully attaches to the EPC network. Signaling Procedure This figure shows the attach procedure initiated by a UE. All the signaling messages exchanged between different network elements like ENONB, MME, SGW, PGW, PCRF, IR, and HSS have been mentioned to understand the overall attach procedure. So firstly the UE sends an attach request message to the ENODB. The first key information elements contained in this message include EPS attach type which specifies the type of an attach request. There are three types of attach requests. 1. EPS attach which can be seen here in figure and indicates that the UA is only registered with the EPC network. 2. Combined attach which indicates that the UE is registered with both the EPC and CS networks and 3. EPS Emergency Attach which indicates that the UE initiates an emergency service. The second key information elements contained in this message include EPS Mobile Identity in which GUDI is a globally unique temporary identity that carries subscriber information such as the MCC and MNC. The ENOB finds the MME based on the RRC parameter carrying the old GUMMEI and selected network. If the MME does not connect to the ENODB or the old GUMMEI is unavailable, the ENODB selects a new MME by using the MME selection function. The ENODB forwards the attach request message to the new MME. Optional, if the UE identifies itself using the GUDI and attaches to a different MME after detach, the new MME obtains the old MME SGSN address by using the GUDI and sends an identification request message to the old MME SGSN to request the subscriber IMSI. The message contains the old GUDI and complete attach request message. If the UE is attached to the same MME after detach, no message is forwarded between the two MMEs. The old MME SGSN responds with an identification response message to the new MME. Optional, if there is no UE information on the old MME SGSN or new MME, the new MME sends an identity request message to the UE to request the UEI MSI. 
optional the MME determines whether authentication is required according to the authentication policy. If there is no UE context on the network and the integrity of the attach request message is not protected or the integrity check fails, authentication is required. Please note that authentication is a complete set of signaling messages exchanged between user equipment, UA, MME, and HSS. The MME obtains the IMEI from the UA by using an identity request message. The IMEI must be encrypted for transmission. The MME can send in me identity check request message to the IR. The message contains me identity and IMSI. The IR returns the result in an me identity check answer message. According to the return result, the MME determines whether to continue the attach procedure or reject the attach request initiated by the UE. Optional if the UE configures ciphered options, transfer, flag, in the attach request message, the MME can send the ciphered options request message to the UA to request ciphered options such as PCO PCO or APN. If the UE has subscribed to services with multiple PDN connections and the PCO contains subscriber identification the UE must return the APN in a ciphered options response message. If there are active bearer contexts of the UE on the new MME, the new MME sends a delete session request message to the related gateway to delete the bearer contexts. The message contains the LBI, indicating the ID of the bearer to be deleted. The gateway responds with a delete session response message. If the PCRF is deployed, the PGW initiates an APCAN session termination procedure to notify the PCRF that resources have been released. Optional after the detach, if the UE attaches to a different MME, on which there is no valid subscription context of the UE, or the IMEI is changed, the MME sends an update location request message to the HSS. Optional, the HSS sends a cancel location request message to the old MME. The message contains IMSI and cancellation type. The old MME responds to the HSS with a cancel location answer message and deletes the MM context and bearer context. Optional, if there are active bearer contexts of the UE on the old MME SGSN, the old MME SGSN sends a delete session request message to the related gateway to delete the bearer contexts. The message contains the LBI. The gateway responds with a delete session response message. If the PCRF is deployed, the PGW initiates an APCAN session termination procedure to notify the PCRF that resources have been released. Optional, the HSS sends an update location answer message to the new MME. The key IEs contained in this message are mentioned below. The subscription data contains one or multiple PDN subscription contexts. Each PDN subscription context contains an EPS subscribed QoS profile and the subscribed APN AMBR. If the UE accesses the network by using an APN that has not been subscribed to or the HSS rejects the update location request, the new MME rejects the attach request of the UE. If the attach request message sent by the UE contains an APN, the MME uses the APN to activate the default bearer. Otherwise, the MME uses the default APN that has been subscribed to for activation. Based on the TIE tracking area identity, the MME obtains the SGW list through DNS resolution. Based on the APN, the MME obtains the PGW list through DNS resolution. Then, the MME selects a pair of SGW and PGW to establish a default bearer, based on the priorities and weights of SGWs and PGWs and the principle that a combined SGW-PGW is preferred and the nearest SGW-PGW in terms of topology is preferred, it then allocates an EPS bearer ID to the default bearer and sends a create session request message to the SGW to request the establishment of the default bearer.
The SGW creates an EPS bearer in the EPS bearer list and sends the create session request message to the PGW based on PDN GW address carried in step 12 earlier. The message contains the TE ID of the SGW, a P address of the S5S8 interface, and QCI. The SGW then caches all downlink packets from the PGW and forwards them after obtaining the eNode BTE ID from the modify bearer request message that we will discuss shortly in upcoming slides. Optional, if dynamic PCC is used, the PGW initiates a procedure for establishing in a PCAN session to obtain default PCC rules for the UE. If dynamic PCC is not used, the PGW uses locally configured policies. The PGW sends a CCRF message to the PCRF, instructing the PCRF to create in a PCAN session. The PCRF performs authorization and policy decision-making. The PCRF responds to the PGW with a CCAM message, carrying the selected a PCAN bearer establishment mode. The PGW creates an EPS bearer in the EPS bearer context list and generates a charging ID. The PGW can forward user plane PDUs between the SGW and the PDN. The PGW starts charging and sends a create session response message to the SGW. The SGW sends the create session response message to the new MME. The new MME sends an attach accept message to the eNode B to request radio resource establishment. The message carries key information such as the APN. The message is included in the S1 MME control message initial context setup request. If a new GUDI is allocated for the new MME, the new GUDI is sent using the attach accept message. The eNode B sends an RRC connection reconfiguration message to the UE to allocate air interface resources. The message carries the EPS radio bearer ID and carries the attach accept message for the UE. The UE sends an RRC connection reconfiguration complete message to the eNode B. The e -node B sends an initial context setup response message to the new MME, carrying the e -node B TE ID and the IP address used for S1U downlink transmission. The UE sends a direct transfer message to the e -node B, carrying the attach complete message. The e -node B forwards the attach complete message to the new MME. The message contains the EPS bearer ID. NAS sequence number, and NAS MAC. After sending the attach complete message, and obtaining a PDN address, the UE sends uplink packets to the eNode B connected, to the SGW, and PGW. The new MME sends a modify bearer request message to the SGW. If the message carries handover indication, the SGW sends a modify bearer request message to the PGW. The message contains handover indication and instructs the PGW to send packets from the non-3GPP network to the 3GPP IP access system through tunnels and forward the packets of the created, default, or dedicated bearers to the SGW. The PGW responds to the SGW with a modify bearer response message. The SGW sends the modify bearer response message to the new MME. Upon receiving the eNode BTE ID, the SGW sends the cache downlink packets. Optional, after receiving the modify bearer response message, the MME needs to send a notify request message to the HSS carrying the APN, PGW identity, and PLMN information of the PGW if the following conditions are met, the request type is not handover, the UE can be handed over to a non-3GPP network specified in the subscription data, and the MME does not select the PGW in the PDN subscription context specified by the HSS. Optional, the HSS stores the flag pairs of the APN and PGW and sends a notify response message to the MME. So this concludes the overall attach process. 
That's all for today's lecture. I hope this has been a useful information. Stay tuned and subscribe to our channel. Thanks.